Okay, yeah. So before going for Microsoft Azure, let me introduce about myself. Uh, hi, my name is Shekhar. Uh, I have 15 years of experience on Microsoft technologies. Currently, I'm working as an architect in DCS. Okay, yeah. See, before going for Microsoft Azure, let me introduce about IT infrastructure that is in on premises. Okay, do you know what is the IT infrastructure? Any idea? Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. What is the IT infrastructure? So IT infrastructure comprises of uh, the servers and the uh, resources what we have to uh, utilize for the uh, operations, whatever uh, the client or the company is performing to ease that uh, process, to automate the process, to help them achieve their business goals, like the servers, the uh, uh, data centers, and all those things. is nothing but collection of hardware, software, switches, network, load balancer. Is Correct, yeah. Okay. So see, this is the IT infrastructure. What are the things that are visible that we can call it as IT infrastructure? For example, mm -hmm. you have entered into the office. What all things are appearing that we will call it as IT infrastructure. Am I right? Like a server, storage, network, server racks, cables, Okay, and the internet that all we will call it as IT infrastructure. Okay, simply we can say, uh, see, IT infrastructure is what refers an enterprise entire collection of hardware, software, network, data center, facilitate related equipment is called infrastructure. Okay, so to maintain our own IT infrastructure, see here you could see many devices, they are communicating with the one switch and this is the load balancer, the requests are handled through, what is that, firewall system. And this is the database, this is the hardware, racks. These entire things we will call it as IT infrastructure. Okay, to maintain our own IT infrastructure, what do we require, any idea? DC, what is that? DC. What is the DC? Data center. Okay. What is the data center, guys? Any idea? Data center is a what? Heart of the organization. If you go for any company in the world, like TCS, Wipro, Cognizant, anywhere, every company they have their own data center. Every company they will have their own data center. Okay. Yeah. Next. What is the Data center. Data center is part of the organization where we can build, deploy, manage, and access the applications within the corporate network is called data center. Clear? For example, if you consider TCS, TCS data center is there, one is in Chennai, other one is in India. Okay, right. Uh, based on their requirement, they will establish the data centers in different locations. Okay, I'm repeating. What is a data center? Data center is a heart of the organization where we can build, deploy, manage, and access the applications within the corporate network. It's called data center. Now, have a look. This is the data center. This is the exact picture of data center. Assume that we got one new project. Assume that we got one new project. So what is that project? There is a one .NET project where I would like to build five servers. How many servers? Five servers. Five Windows servers, assume that. Now, first step, we have to submit the request to data center team. We have to submit the request to data center team. Once you submit the request to data center team, clear. So they will allocate the space. See, these are all the racks. These are all the racks. They will allocate the space. Then first step, they will configure the OS. Next, configure the infrastructure. Third step, configure the networking. Then configure the firewall settings. Next, they will configure a load balancer, et cetera, et cetera. So to complete all these structure or things, it will take minimum seven to 10 days. Am I right? In on premises okay? to build and configure the five virtual machines, minimum it will take seven to 10 days. 
Okay, finally, these servers should be hand out to whom? To whom we need to hand over? Developers. Developers will take care about uh, developing the application, deploy, testing, unit testing, that all they will take care of. So, to build this infrastructure, we require different teams. Am I right? We require different teams. I can say Windows team, networking team, firewall team, monitoring team. Next, uh, we can say third party installation configuration, that is another team. Okay, next deployment team. So application monitoring team. These many teams are required to fulfill the business requirement. Okay, yeah. First thing here, it is cost effective. Cost effective in the sense, see uh, here we have to manage these many teams and to maintain the data center, it is not a small task. We have to spend a lot of time, a lot of budget to maintain our own data center. Okay. So why? Because to maintain our own data center, there are many challenges. There are many challenges. What are the challenges? First thing, assume that this data center capacity is assume that 5,000 servers. So maximum we can deploy 5,000 servers on top of this data center. Assume that we got another new project where I would like to build 1,000 more servers. This data center is not enough. In that case, what I have to do? We have to extend the data center. For example, there is no space. Again, I have to purchase another building and design it according to rules and regulations and guidelines to deploy data center. That is again cost. Because of these reasons, entire IT industry looking towards cloud, 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 cloud. Okay, there are many more challenges are there to maintain our own data center. Okay, one is, see, uh, we need dedicated space for housing infrastructure. We need dedicated space for housing infrastructure. Okay, uh, housing infrastructure in a sense, I said, right, we need to purchase one building and design according to data center rules and regulations and guidelines. Okay, do you know Microsoft, uh, they are trying to make data centers in C, within the C, they are in testing phase. Okay, yeah. next, other thing is we need high bandwidth internet. High bandwidth internet in the sense, assume that my data center is there in New York. I am sitting in Hyderabad to access my application and organization related applications, server, storage, network, we require what? High bandwidth internet. That high bandwidth internet. Next, uh, other thing is, see, we need redundant power supply. Redundant power supply in a sense, you know, right? Data center is running, depends on electricity. If there is no electricity, you should have capability to run with the generator or battery, with the generator or battery system. Right, that is about what redundant power supply. Next, dust free environment. Dust free environment means always we should maintain clean and green about that data center. Next, efficient cooling system. If you could enter into this data center, you can see less than 10 degrees Celsius temperature. This is another challenge. Yeah, and uh, high physical security. You know, right. Unauthorized person should not enter into the data center. Clear? So why? Because we have to provide high security for our data center. Got it? Next. Other thing is uh, inter data center networks, DR, disaster recovery. What does it mean? For example, we had only one data center. Now, due to some unexpected events occurred, this data center is crashed. This data center is crashed. So how can I record the data? To record the data, we require another backup data center that we will call it as DR, disaster recovery. To maintain disaster recovery data center, again, it is cost. See, to maintain the data center, it is not a small task. We have to spend course and course and course. Okay, and to establish and maintenance, we require a lot of time we have to spend. 
right yeah so this is the another challenge next thing is hardware replacement what does it mean you know right nowadays every six months we are getting new software technologies into the market okay new enhancement for our application new enhancement for our software uh, softwares for different projects okay to support new softwares to support new enhancement background we have to upgrade hardware system as well okay best example you know that right if you consider one smart mobile smartphone initially we are getting with 1 gb ram smartphone next later 2 gb 3 gb 4 gb 5 gb now 8 gb ram mobile also there in the market why we are uh, increasing why we are spending that much amount for small devices because to make sure that run those applications smoothly on our device am i right yes, sir no. for smartphone itself we are spending every year 20 to 30k just assume that to maintain our data center okay to replace the hardware Okay, to replace the hardware to support latest technologies, again we have to spend lot of time, lot of budget. Clear. So to upgrade also it is not a small task. Clear. Because of all these reasons, entire IT industry looking towards cloud, 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 cloud. What is that, guys? Cloud. Now, if people tell me, what is the cloud computing? Any idea? Anyone? Yeah, by cloud computing, we mean that you do uh, you install your application on the cloud, uh, like Azure, AWS or Azure. You get you provision hardware from there. You run your application and there without uh, <clears throat> thinking about IT infrastructure, and you have to pay as you go. Uh, these infrastructures are managed by cloud materials. What is So, what is the cloud? Note it down. Cloud computing is nothing but collection of remote services. Okay. What is that, guys? Collection of remote services. Cloud computing. What is the cloud? Cloud is collection of remote services and access them over the internet. For the internet is called cloud computing. Clear? Yeah. I am repeating. What is the cloud computing? Cloud computing is collection of remote services and access them over the internet is called cloud computing. Okay? You know, right? Nowadays, if we have one cloud computing account and one internet connectivity. If we have one laptop, that is more than enough. We can develop our own application and host it into cloud computing and publish that into market. Okay, within fraction of minutes. That's it. It's called cloud. So very simple definition. That's what I said. Cloud computing is nothing but collection of remote services and access them over the internet. It's called cloud computing. Okay, this is my definition. Very simplest definition. You might have no different definition in the world in IT world. Right now, have a look. Ah, uh, according to NIST, NIST means National Institute on Standard Technology. Cloud computing is model of enabling convenient on-demand network access, where we can build network server storage application in fraction of seconds. I'm telling fraction of seconds. Okay, and the can rapidly provision and the minimal management. Why? Because entire infrastructure is managed by third party vendors. Assume that who are they? I will let you know later. Right? This is about cloud computing. Okay, so in cloud computing, mainly there are three types of services. One is infrastructure as a service. I am repeating I A A S. What is that? I A A S. What is the full form of the I A S? Infrastructure as a service.
infrastructure guys what all things come underlying infrastructure any idea i said right just now that all comes under infrastructure what all things like servers storage network database okay uh, switches boards these all comes under infrastructure clear that is what infrastructure as a service next pass what is the pass what is the pass platform and service yeah platform and service so when you go for infrastructure as a service just they will provide the servers to you on top of it so application development deployment configuration publishing the application that all you have to take care for example uh, you had one application assume that that is java application okay now this cloud vendor will provide the infrastructure i mean they will provide the server on top of it okay assume that this is the virtual machine okay on top of it you have to install apache tomcat server or weblogic or websphere then host your java application that can be published into outside of the world that all activity you have to take care just they will provide infrastructure clear here application installation deployment configuration publishing configuring the dns configuring the ports that all you have to take care right next coming to pass what is that pass platform as a services the name itself it is describing that platform as a service platform in the sense they are providing infrastructure and run time what is that run time okay here you need not worry about installation configuration management of your infrastructure everything would be taken care by vendor okay for example you have java application just go on deploy that's it you least bother about it what type of application you are deploying whether it is java or dot net or php or python or ruby or node js whatever it is just they are providing runtime just host your application that's it clear this is about what platform as a service this is very important nowadays most of the companies medium and small companies they are referring to platform as a service why because they would not like to manage infrastructure and the run time got it yeah that is about what platform as a services next other thing is software as a services what is the software as a service guys any idea what is the software as a service best example for software as a service is what is that office 365 have you read about it real time professionals yes okay yeah office 365 see you need not worry about installation configuration management and all everything would be taken care by vendor just you have to consume those services that's it under office 365 we have around 30 plus components clear okay do you know uh, we have ms teams most of the companies are using ms team are you installing any software any configuration no so ms teams provided by microsoft just we are installing one add in our local mission and collaboratively working with our colleagues okay if required you can access this microsoft teams within the browser itself for example have a look open the browser teams.microsoft.com even in our office also go and try it out teams.microsoft.com okay it will be open in the browser itself so what does it mean this is installing sorry these are maintained by microsoft these are maintained by microsoft so i am entering my credential
Oh, it's not taking. Okay, let it be. So that browser, so that software you can open it in the browser itself. That is teams.microsoft.com. Same way, uh, we have MS Teams, Outlook, okay, uh, SharePoint, Teams, next uh, Dynamics DRM, Power Automate, Power uh, PowerPoint. I mean, everything can be as if it in the browser. So you need not worry about integration, configuration, management. Everything will be taken care by Microsoft. Best example is what? Office Teams. Got it? See, have a look. Uh, these are the Office 365 components. Uh, yeah, it's Mr. Fine. So these are the Office 365 components. Now have a look. This is one slide is more than enough to distinguish between on premises and cloud. Okay. Yeah. So in on premises, keep an eye. To configure network, storage, server, OS, runtime application, everything we have to take care. To maintain all these things, we required one thing. What was that? Any idea? Anyone? To maintain all these components, we required what? Data Anyone? center. Sorry? Yes, that. We require data. data center. Okay, so if I go for cloud, there is an infrastructure as a service. So whatever the things are highlighted with red color, that will be provided by Microsoft. I mean, third party vendor, cloud vendor. So OS, what type of OS you required? Windows or Linux, that is up to you. On top of it, you have to install and configure your application. That is infrastructure as a service. Next, platform as a service. I said, right? So runtime and platform and the infrastructure they have provided and we have to take care about your application. You need not worry about what type of application you are deploying, right? Be it is Java or .NET or PHP or Python, whatever it is. That is what platform as a service. Next, software as a service. See, everything is highlighted with red color. Nothing is there in our control to manage everything provided by Microsoft. That is best example office. You know, right? I think uh, 15 days back, Microsoft Teams, Outlook, entire Office 365 were uh, downstage. There was big outage for India. Have you heard about it? Real time props. Have you guys? Fifteen days back. 15 days or one month, yeah. There is a, uh, there was big outage for Office 365. So MS Teams, Outlook, that is in outage for I think around six hours. Got it? Yeah, so this is about what? Software as a service. Okay, yeah, next. So there are three types of clouds in the market. Okay. There are three types of clouds in the market. These are basic if you go for any cloud computing in the market. One is public, private, hybrid. One is public, private, hybrid. Okay, what is the public? Any idea? Public cloud. Types of cloud in the sense, public cloud. What is the public cloud? It means any can use. Yes, correct. Simply we can say the resources can be accessible from anywhere in the world. It is called public. I am repeating. What is the public? The resources can be accessible from anywhere in the world. It is called public. Okay. Yeah. For example, I have created one virtual mission. If I share IP address, username and password with you, you people can sit anywhere in the world and access my application and access my virtual mission. Got it? That is called public. Next, private in the sense, the services or resources can be accessible within the corporate network is called private. You know, right? For example, you are working in TCS. You will go to TCS organization. First, you will connect it to TCS virtual network. 
then you can connect it to your, your client network. So what does that mean? After you connect it to client, client network, then client related applications can be accessible within your system. When you disconnect the VPN, what does that mean? You are out of from private network. Then you will not able to access your client related services. That is what private. I am repeating private in the sense the resources can be accessible within the corporate network is called private. Okay. Next, what is the hybrid? Nowadays we are using hybrid keyword, right? Frequently in the market. What does it mean? What is the hybrid? Any idea? Hybrid in the sense, uh, you know, right? Hybrid model, hybriding working model in the sense. What does it mean? So two days work from home, three days. So it work. is, I believe, a hybrid is combination of uh, in premises as well as uh, public cloud or private cloud. Hybrid in the sense, very simple. The companies are public and private cloud or hybrid. Yeah. Okay, simple hybrid work environment in the sense two days work from home, three days work from office. The combination of public slash private call is what? Hybrid model. Same day here, the combination of public slash private cloud call, hybrid cloud. So few applications are running as a public, few more applications are running as a private. So if you, if you establish the connection between that to manage, then that we will call it as what? Hybrid cloud. Okay, yeah, next. See, there are many vendors that are there to provide cloud computing technology. Who are they, guys? Any idea? One is Microsoft. Next, AWS. Next, Google. Next, Open. IBM. Okay, next, what else? IBM Cloud, IBM cloud is also there. We have Oracle Cloud. Next, yeah. Alibaba. You know, right? Alibaba, China. Yeah. So, out of them, very, 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 very popular in the market is. Okay. If we consider cloud market is 100%, so these two clouds itself occupied 80%, remaining are just 20%. Okay, there is a big uh, uh, revelation uh, from Microsoft. So both are good cloud computing. I cannot say as a faculty, I, I am working as our tech. I, I don't say Azure is best. I don't say AWS is best. So in few things, Azure is very good. Okay, uh, for other perspective, AWS is very good. But at this moment, high market capture done by Microsoft Azure. Okay, let us discuss it later. We'll get into that later. Why Microsoft Azure? Why not AWS and that? So what is the Azure? Any idea? Anyhow, uh, I could say Azure is cloud computing. That is quite common. Now, what is the Azure? Why Microsoft introduced Azure keyword? They can go for Microsoft Cloud, right? Instead of Microsoft Cloud, why they have initiated that term called Azure? Why they have created the term called Azure? The agendic term of Azure is blue color sky. If you go and verify in chart GPT or Google or Google it, so we can say what? Azure, the term is blue color sky. Clouds are there on top of sky itself, right? So that is the meaning behind that. Microsoft introduced the word called Azure. Okay, so the word is introduced by Satya Nadella. Now, uh, the total Azure cloud computing uh, initiated by Satya Nadella later they became as a CEO of Microsoft Cloud. Okay, so what is the Azure? See, initially, Azure logo is like this. This is a blue color sky. Okay, they introduced that Microsoft logo. Okay, now if people tell me what is the Azure? Azure is is a cloud computing technology. Azure is a cloud computing technology introduced by Microsoft. Okay, yeah, next. Simply we can say Azure is a comprehensive set of cloud services. I will look, I am repeating very important on the Microsoft interview question. What is the Azure? 
Azure is a comprehensive set of cloud services. Here, the word called comprehensive. Comprehensive in the sense, it is set up, group up, set up, group up, all services. Okay. Azure is a comprehensive set of cloud services where we can build, deploy, manage, and access the applications through global network data centers. It's called Microsoft Azure. This definition provided by Microsoft, not defined by me. Okay. So, what is the Microsoft Azure? Microsoft Azure is a comprehensive set of cloud services where we can build, deploy, manage, and access the applications through global network data centers. It's called Microsoft Azure. Okay. Yeah. Why Microsoft Azure? Simply, I can say, okay, Microsoft Azure has more data centers around the world. Okay, this is one point is enough. Why Microsoft Azure is Microsoft Azure has many data centers around the world. I can say Microsoft has 64 regions around 130 countries. They have their own data centers. Coming to AWS, AWS has just 18 regions. Where 18 regions, where 64 regions, just you can assume it. Okay, so why? If you have more data centers, what is the usage? You know, right, for example, you need some grocery immediate basis. What you will do? You will go to nearest, uh, what is that? Nearest store, nearest shop, and bring it frequently. Or bring it quickly. Am I right? Same way, assume that my my customers are there in the India region. I can go and deploy my applications in India regions itself. Why? Because when you access the application by Indian people, there is no network latency. I can say network latency is very, very, very low. And quickly it will respond. The landing pages would be loaded immediately. So if there is any issue immediately, we, they can sort, sort it out. So that is the advantage. If you have more customers in US region, yes, go on deploy your application into in, uh, US regions. Why? Because we are bringing our application closer to customers. Got it? In Telugu, we can say, earlier we could say, Prajala Vardhaka Palanantargara, same way. We are bringing our application closer to customers. Okay, that is about the Microsoft Azure. Yeah. So what is the Azure? Again, I am repeating. Azure is a comprehensive set of cloud services where we can build, deploy, manage, and access the applications through global network data centers. This point is important. Through global network data centers. Clear? So when Microsoft Azure came into the picture, any idea? Anyone? Initially, we used to call it as Windows Azure. Windows Azure came into the picture in the era. What is that? Come on. 2010. Yes, 2010. So during the time, during the time, Microsoft supporting only Microsoft related applications, Windows application, that's it. That's why we used to call it as Windows Azure. Later, in the year of 2014, they renamed Windows Azure as a Microsoft Azure. Okay, so in the year of 2014. In the year of 2014, Microsoft introduced one new technology called ARM, Azure Resource Manager, and the entire data center, and all services would be running on Azure, sorry, Azure Resource Manager. They introduced a new technology called ARM. Then they renamed Windows Azure as a Microsoft Azure. Now, officially, we used to call it as Microsoft Azure in the market. Got it? What is that? Microsoft Azure. So what is this uh, ARM, sir? Uh, Azure Resource Manager, like what exactly it does? Uh, that is, uh, they build another infrastructure. 
Azure Resource Manager totally they have developed on top of it all services are running. Entire Azure portal is running on Azure Resource Manager. So are you saying that ARM is basically a platform on top of that uh, Microsoft Azure is there? Okay. Yes. Now have a look. This is the one slide. Uh, initially, we used to call it as Windows Azure. That is in 2010. Later, they introduced, what is that? In the year of 2014, April, they renamed it to Windows, sorry, Microsoft Azure. Okay. So they renamed Windows Azure as a Microsoft Azure. Okay, clear? Yeah, next. See, uh, so this is slide I pull it from Microsoft official site. See, Azure has more global regions than any other cloud provider. Who is the commentator here? Other cloud provider in the sense? AWS. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so now the regions are 65 plus, around 140 countries, Microsoft has their own data center. Okay, yeah, this is about what? Microsoft Azure. Next, see, why Microsoft Azure, why not AWS? One is it is low cost. One it is low cost. Next, instant capacity. Instant capacity means like instant copy, guys. Okay, instant copy in the sense, um, if you would like to have some copy, we can make it within fraction of minutes, one or two minutes. Same day, for example, now five servers are using for your project. Now load is increasing. The incoming traffic has been increasing. So what you have to do, you would like to add two more servers, yes? You can create these two servers within fraction of minute. I am telling only minute, not even two minutes. Then we can add them into load balance. That's it. Okay. Next, speed and agility. Okay. Next, your apps can be distributed across the globe. You know, right? Uh, why Microsoft and the Google, uh, Facebook, Twitter, they are very fast. Even though they have billions of customers in their world, because they are maintaining what? Cache servers around the world. Am I right? For example, okay, so this is the Facebook data center or Facebook. Now, Facebook maintain what is that? Cache servers around the globe. For example, if I access my Facebook account, account my request will go to nearest cache server, response will back to the client. My request will not go to main data center. Okay, I am I sitting in New York. If I access my Facebook, my request will go to nearest New York data center and response will back to the client, not to Indian data center or not to some uh, Malaysian data center. Okay, so that is what cache servers. Microsoft has their own data center, their own infrastructure to distribute our application into across the world in a minute. Clear? Next, and it is open and flexible. Anytime, anywhere, we can change the infrastructure. You can migrate from as to pass, pass to SAS. Okay? Uh, and it is more important. Next, other thing is security. See, security doesn't matter nowadays. Why? Because irrespective of other things, whatever it is happening around you, your data is very, 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 very secure. Okay, I could say Microsoft uh, complaints, around 73 certified complaints approved by US federal government. Okay, so Microsoft Azure is very, very secure. How it is secure now? For example, Satya Narendra traveling with you. If you tap that laptop, okay, if you tap this your laptop, we cannot decrypt the data. That is how security they have provided. Okay, that is waste we cannot use anymore. Okay, so if you take the hard disk, if you try to decrypt it, no, it is not at all possible. Not only that, 
if you enter into the Azure data center, if you unclick one desk, if you come out, if you try to decrypt the data, no, it won't possible. That is how security they have provided. Clear? So forget about security nowadays. This is one of the key roles. Okay? Uh, they are providing high security for our data. That's why, as of now, we couldn't hear that Azure data centers or AWS data centers hacked by someone, as of now. There is no evidence to hack our cloud data centers. Clear? Especially in Azure. Okay, so uh, this is about what? Overview of Microsoft Azure. Okay, there are uh, many certification papers, guys. Okay. Uh, I will let you know one by one. First thing is Azure Administrator. This is AZ104 at present. AZ104. Okay, Azure Developer 204 at present. Okay, uh, Azure Solution Architect AZ304. Okay. Azure Administrator 104, Azure Developer 204, Architect 304, Azure DevOps 400, AZ 400. Okay, let me simplify it. AZ 104 is admin. Okay, AZ 204 is developer. Okay, AZ304 is architect, Azure architect. Okay, AZ400 is what? Azure DevOps. Okay, so here I am discussing about uh, these two papers. What is that? AZ104 and AZ400. Okay, these are all administration azure admin plus azure devops combination okay this combination has lot of demand in the market so i am covering these two certification papers okay clear so that syllabus uh, what all things i am going to cover that is, i will present it in next okay so sir are you going to provide some materials also for these two exams Yes, yes, I will provide that terms, okay, uh, recording, sample, everything, everything I will cover, I will tell So how easy is it, like, let's suppose, uh, uh, with the, you might be knowing it with the uh, documentation, whatever you are providing, the terms and all, can we pass it easily or it is very uh, tough yes. exam? Actually, we may get the Sir, your voice is very low. Uh, can you repeat, please? Uh, yeah, seventy percent of questions you may receive it from these dumps. Okay, mm -hmm. thirty percent you have to clarify. Okay, yeah, that's that's reasonable. Yeah, right, everyone. Or is there any breaks in between? Could you please confirm? Yes, sir. No. Okay, fine. Yes, yes, yes. Fine. Yeah. And uh, what is uh, what's about duration for this whole course? Yeah, so the duration, uh, this course duration is two months. Okay, one month is for your administration. Actually, sir, your voice is break. Breaking. Can, your voice Can you please uh, repeat one second? For everyone, just I am asking. Yeah, in between it is breaking. Everyone? Not always. Yes. Okay. How is it now? Still low. Oh my God. <laughs> I said it is good. Okay, fine. Yeah, you can go ahead and ask the questions, whatever you have. The passing marks, uh, passing percentage is 70% for both of these uh, certification or more? Yeah, 60% is pass percentage. Okay. 
that means we can easily cover that right yeah. and sir uh, you said two months for the uh, course duration is it daily uh, one hour or how's that yeah it is daily one hour uh, eight to nine o'clock okay uh, monday to friday saturday there is a time i will take the session so that is depends okay so that we will decide it on friday Okay, and uh, how about the fees and all? Like uh, one, uh, once the uh, how many demo sessions will be there? Yeah, fees details and all you can uh, verify with institute people. They will pay. Okay, sir. What is the eligibility to learn this course? Is there like any eligibility? Ah, uh, yeah. So cloud computing can learn anyone, guys. And now it is mandatory nowadays. Okay, so whether you are working Azure, uh, you, whether you are working Windows admin or Linux admin or yeah. some storage admin, you least bother about it. Cloud is for everyone. This is mandatory course. Whether you will go for AWS or Azure, that is depends on your total choice. But nowadays, for IT industry, cloud is mandatory. So everyone is eligible. Okay, whether you are BCom, FCA, or BTEC, or BTEC Civil, or whatever it is, you least bother about it. Everyone is eligible to learn this technology. Sir, freshers can learn this course? Yes, 100%. Okay, thank you. So, you know, right, now all services are moving to cloud. For example, you are the Java developer. Okay, now Java environment is there in cloud computing itself. How to use it, that you should know. So 100% you should learn cloud. Okay, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Any more queries? Any doubts? Feel free and ask me. I will clarify your queries. So uh, this can you provide be... them as well? Sorry? Like, can you provide the notes as well to um, uh, make like a uh, infrastructure yeah, sure. of interview? Uh, yeah, I will provide the notes and uh, every day. Okay. Uh, sample listen. That's all. I will take care. Ashika, Ashika, this is true. Yeah. Uh, can you please tell me the what what the with the syllabus? What is the limitation? The syllabus content of Azure Anathpur and Azure Core. Uh, can you that please come again? Can you please share the syllabus content of Azure Anathpur and Azure Core? Yes, yes, I will share. Yeah, tomorrow I will present the content of Azure Core and Azure Core. Okay. So tomorrow I'm going to discuss about what are the modules I am going to cover now for AZ-104 and AZ-400, both certification papers. Okay, fine. On same time? Yeah, same time. Okay. So, sir, is there any the unit timing will be same for the two months? Yeah, timings will be same, guys, 8 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Tomorrow I'll connect back. Bye. Have a great day. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Good one. Thank you.